What's up, you guys? All right, so I'm going to continue on with my Fruit of the Spirit series, and we are on love. And what a great topic right now, right? The first fruit of the Spirit is love. I'm going to be reading a lot of scripture um, and just putting a few of my thoughts in there, but primarily scripture, you guys. So just follow along, pay attention, let this sink in a little bit. Love is the bond of perfection. Without love, there is nothing. If you do well, you do well because of love. What was once impossible becomes possible. Love is the driving force that motivates the heart of the warrior. Love is first in Paul's list of spiritual fruit. In my previous video, I compared the works of the flesh with the works of the spirit, and we saw that they are at war. It is important to note that love, the type of love we are speaking about here, is not simply a virtue. It is something that we can improve, we can't approve, improve, ha, let me say that again. It is something that we cannot improve upon in the flesh, at least to the capacity that God calls us to. The fruit of the Spirit are a gift. If you have the Spirit, you have God's love. It's not something we discipline ourselves to achieve, but something we already have that needs to be exercised. Just like we have muscles, but if we want them to grow and get stronger, we need to exercise them. Not Now, really to grow our muscles, not only do you need to exercise them, but you need to do so strenuously. You need resistance continually. It is the same with love. In order to truly grow in this area, you need to put yourself in vulnerable, uncomfortable situations. Love needs to be challenged continually to grow. Since the law of God has been fulfilled in Christ, Christ has now given us two commands. Matthew 22, 37 and 38 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Two commands, yet how terrible we do this. Listen, 1 John 4, 19 through 21, it says, If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. We'll come back to that. Now John 13, 35 says, By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We are to be separated out for our love. Is that what you're known for? Are you known for your love? Again, the scripture says in Matthew 5, 43 through 48, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than anybody else? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This love is not common to man. Loving those who hate you, pray for those who persecute you, what did Jesus say when he was on the cross being crucified after being beaten, whipped, spit on, mocked, and tried unjustly? He looked up to the Father and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Which leads to another example of godly love, the fact that he was up on the cross. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers, 1 John 3.16. Now, there are different levels of laying down your life. You could literally lay down your life for somebody, right, to save another or whatever the case may be. You can also lay down your life by laying down your own interests, liberties, freedoms for the sake of others. Philippians 2, 3 through 4 says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility 
count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Guys, this is so countercultural to us right now. We're, our culture is all about self-promotion. It says, count others as more significant than yourself. 1 Corinthians 10, 22 through 24 says, All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. He's saying all things are lawful because we are not bound by the law. We're free in Christ. If the Son shall set you free, you are free indeed. We're talking about the law. We're talking about sin. And we're free from all of this. All things are lawful, but not all things build up or seek the good of the neighbor, right? And that's what it's about. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. We're going to see a working example of this in Romans 14, uh, verses 14 through 23. It says, I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself. But it is unclean for anyone who thinks it's unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy and the Holy Spirit. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. Acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not for the sake of food destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good, it is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats. Because the eating is not done from faith, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. <clears throat> if we just look at that topic for a minute, we'll just say the topic of wine or drinking. Uh, the Bible does not say that you cannot have a glass of wine. In fact, communion is supposed to be wine. It does say, however, not to be drunk with wine. And if at the legal age you believe it is okay to drink wine responsibly, then have your wine. But listen very carefully. If you are in the company of someone who believes otherwise or may have an issue with alcohol, you should not drink. You should not drink if you want to love your neighbor. If you do, you're doing so in offense, not in love. This is an example of all things being lawful, but putting the interest of others above your own, even though you're free to do so. Okay? That's a, a, a great example. You know, if, if you believe it's okay to have a glass of wine with dinner and do that responsibly and not get drunk, but just to have a glass of wine to relax, it's okay. But if you're having dinner with somebody who believes otherwise, and you continue to do so, you know it, and you continue to do so, you're doing it in offense, and you're not loving your brother, your neighbor. We need to be alert, and we need to pay attention to these things in order to properly exercise love. And that's what we need to do, right? We need to exercise love. And it can be strenuous. You may want to drink, but you're not going to, because you're exercising love. Now, you can apply that many other ways, you guys. Think a little bit, and I'm sure you can come up with many ways. Now, here is a classic description of love from 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. We hear this at every wedding, right? But pay attention today. Pay very close attention. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. 
It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation we able, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's love. We know since Christ was willing to lay down his life for us, if we believe that, there is nothing else that can separate us from that love. Are you willing to lay down your life? For your brothers and sisters, your neighbor, or as Christ did, for your enemies? Are you willing to give up your liberties to better love your neighbor? In Christ, all that matters is faith working through love. I'll say that again. Faith working through love. If you have the Spirit of God in you, you know the love of God, and you have the love of God in you, but you need to access it. You need to exercise it. John 14, 15 says this, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And this is Jesus speaking. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now some people read this, as Jesus being demanding or power hungry, love me and keep my commandments. But this couldn't be further from the truth. Jesus only gave us two commandments. Matthew 22, 37 and 38 once again says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. 1 John 4, 19 through 21 says, if anyone says I love God and hates his brother, remember we read this already, but listen to it again. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Jesus is saying, it is impossible to love me if you don't love others. If you say you love me and don't love one another, you are lying to yourself. If you love him, you were born again. And by your new nature, by the Spirit, you will love one another. We will love one another. 1 John 5 1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. That's everybody, folks. No matter what color or race, God's children are everywhere of every tongue, tribe, and nation. Husbands, love your wives. Fathers, love your children. Love, love, love. And for those who don't love God, God says, love them too. Love your enemies. Love those who persecute you. Love those who hate you. Let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. 1 John 3, 18. You cannot do this on your own. You need the Spirit of God to even desire this. In closing, let, re let me remind you that you can just look around right now and see how far off humanity is from this type of love. Yes, we can love and we do love, but are we truly exercising it? Are we loving in deed and in truth? Are we straining to love others in order to grow in love? Again, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Guys, we're called to love those who are difficult to love. And we have the power to do so. Don't be afraid. God loves you. God is love. And everyone who loves has been born of God. You can have this love through Jesus Christ and his Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 says this, you guys. God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of love, power, and self-control. Let me leave you with this, guys. 1 Timothy 1.5. 1 
the aim of our charge is to, let me start again. The aim of our charge is to love, I can't say it right, I'm not finishing strong here. One more time. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. Take a moment, you guys. Sit back and just imagine that. Imagine if that's how we all lived. Loving one another with a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. We all have this fruit through the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to exercise it. We need to We all have access to this kind of love through the power of the Holy Spirit, through faith in Jesus Christ. You can access it. We need to exercise it, and we need to exercise it strenuously.